Cyber Peace Foundation and ma'am is a coach and uh, consultant in the Cyber Safety and Security Department. Welcome ma'am. Ma'am, you are not audible. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for inviting me for the session. Thank you, ma'am. Over to you, ma'am. <clears throat> so, is my screen uh, uh, visible to all? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma not full screen. It's visible half. Okay, okay. Just one minute. Is it okay now? Now it's fine. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, ma'am, uh, any more participants to join? Yes, ma'am. They are joining, ma'am. Okay. Then uh, also, if you can tell me that from which diets and SCRTs, which states they are representing. Hindi mein karna hai, English mein karna hai, I will work it out accordingly. Most of the states are from South India. Okay. Uh, and one is from North, that is Ladakh. And mm -hmm. uh, we are conducting this phase in English medium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there okay. are uh, total six states and UT. Uh, which are the states, madam, if you could tell? Ma'am, there are uh, Tamil Nadu, Andhra mm -hmm. sorry, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Karnataka, Puducherry, Ladakh, and uh, Andaman and Nicobar. Okay, good. And we have the diet faculty uh, or uh, like what diet is... Diet faculties, faculty? teachers also, and mm -hmm. from uh, the teacher educators also. Fine. Thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, if everybody is joined, then uh, can I start? There are 124 participants as of now. So, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I know today uh, is the last session. And uh, the last session is always a tiring session. Uh, but uh, I want to tell you that this session is uh, very, very important to you also like other sessions. And uh, this may not be directly on the educational resources, but it is how to actually use those educational resources in a safe and responsible manner so that we are safe, our students are safe, our institute is safe, and our the data of our students is safe. So it is very, very uh, important. And uh, this session, uh, I would like to ask, uh, you know, I, I want to conduct in an interactive mode as much as I can online. So I'll be asking you a few questions. And uh, uh, Madam Pinky, if you could uh, uh, look at the chat box and uh, uh, tell me whether the answers are yes or no, or A or B, then it will help me a lot. Sure, ma'am. I'm there. OK. And uh, so may I start now? you may unmute and respond okay and uh, uh, thank you very much uh, uh, to uh, dr behra uh, dr indu uh, dr angel yes, dr. for in it, uh, uh, inviting me for this session uh, it is always a pleasure to be uh, associated with uh, such eminent educationists and uh, share the thoughts. Uh, I hope the session today uh, will be valuable, useful to you. It will also depend on your uh, participation and concentration in the session. So what I'll do is I'll keep on asking a few questions in between. Uh, you don't have to write the full answers. You have to type yes or no or A or B as appropriate. And uh, uh, after 50% of the session is over, I will give you opportunity to ask questions. At that time, uh, CIET can have the mics open or have the questions on chat, whichever way you want. Then at the end of the session, also, uh, I'll keep uh, at least 10 minutes for the questions and answers. Uh, because in my last sessions uh, that I have done, uh, I have received a lot of queries and good queries. And some of the queries were so good that they led me also to think uh, further. Also sharing with you, I also have an education background of over 20 years. And out of that, I have been associated with CIT and CRT uh, in the different uh, uh, ways for more than 12 years. 
and uh, so uh, everybody kind of put your uh, uh, reading uh, put your uh, uh, listening caps on and we start this session on cyber safety and security concerns so uh, uh, cyber safety is very very important now why is it so important because half of our time we are on the internet either we are you know looking for resources or downloading resources or we are on social media whatsapp calling people so you will find that people are spending huge amount of time on uh, social media and internet and uh, during covid it increased so much because uh, uh, all the services of our lives entertainment social connect education uh, mostly i mean uh, you you uh, i i actually uh, say uh, kudos to all the educators who rose overnight to the need and started online classes most of the educators did not uh, were not well versed with technology or creating digital resources but whether it was uh, uh, schools or colleges uh, just because uh, each one of you is so committed to his or her job and did not want that your students should suffer a zero year because of covid all of you rose to occasion now since that was in a bit of a hurry uh, the sometimes what happens that the safety concerns are left behind because you know one has to reach across to the students so today we'll discuss some of those we'll also discuss how to safely use your online resources which you have been uh, discussing for past 5 uh, uh, days so uh, let me start with a question and uh, you could write a or b so has the internet connected people together that is brought people together or it has isolated people even more what is your thought about it ki it has it connected people or has it isolated people so you can type either a or b in the chat box i'll give you about uh, uh, 30 seconds please quickly fill in your responses you just have to type an alphabet very good the i can see the number increase number of responses increasing very fast so uh, uh miss pinky would you uh, because i can't access the chat box i am uh, uh, screen sharing so would you look at the answers and give me a uh, an approximate understanding of whether it was more of a or more of b or equal ma'am i think more of a but there are quite number of b they are saying and some of them are saying both yes so uh i i totally agree with a i totally agree with b and i totally agree with both now uh, why because internet has definitely connected people together it, it has brought people together from various geographies various parts of the world especially during covid and even otherwise but it has also isolated people even more we are connecting with people outside our family outside uh, uh, our immediate uh, uh, neighborhood immediate people but we are not talking to our real friends or our family because in family what you find that everybody is busy on their uh, uh, a lot of times everybody is busy on their phones or ipads or uh, whatever and chatting with people who are you know some thousand kilometers away but not even replying to the parents or the brother sisters who are asking them something so even on the dining table you see that uh, a lot of time uh, people bring their phones on the dining table and while having food they are uh, uh, you know there is ping ping happening from the phone and then they are replying to the messages so it's definitely it has isolated the people in the sense that uh, people now spend more time in sending messages than actually talking really talking to each other so uh, now we have to smartly think that yes it's good for connection but uh, uh, no 
we should not be each, each of us getting into our own silos in front of the digital medium and forgetting to talk to, to really talk to people in front of us. So in that uh, manner, all of you were right. Now, why internet? especially the young people. Why do the young people go on internet so much? So uh, quickly, communication is one thing. They want to communicate, whether it is communication for pleasure or profession or whichever way, or, or uh, uh, taking any service, then connecting with people, then creation, uh, uh, creating posts, creation of something, curiosity. We want to browse things. Google Baba is always there to help us. So services for availing the services of the government. We go online for various financial needs, for, for paying our bills, for so many other things, for our travel and other things, booking the travel. Then we also go on the internet for fun, adventure, uh, thrill. And uh, because, you know, we are watching some video which is thrilling or a movie or listening to a song or listening to a podcast. And the young people like to go to internet for independence because they feel that if they are on a social media site like Instagram or Discord, they feel that their parents are not a part of that place and it is my independent space and I can do whatever I want, which is scary. So other and these young people have a sense of belonging in the online spaces because the people of their generation, their interests are there. Then again, being heard, a lot of people post on the internet because they want their opinions uh, to be broadcasted to everybody. It is good, it is bad. Uh, I'll talk about it later. So uh, no immediate judgment. A lot of us become uh, very bold uh, on the internet, sharing our thoughts because immediate judgment is not there, but the judgment comes later. And anonymity. A lot of people think that I can do whatever I want on the internet, Nobody knows who, uh, what I'm doing or whom I'm connecting with. They don't realize that uh, even if they assume a pseudo name, then their details like email ID and IP address are still, uh, location, et cetera, are still going on. So there is no anonymity. There is no secret. There is no privacy on the internet, actually. But these are the reasons. And uh, uh, learning is another, like I said, education I'll bring in later. So for these reasons, everybody goes on the internet. So uh, in, in education, I'm sure you know about it, you have experienced it more than I do. So there are a lot of learning opportunities uh, online. A lot of MOOCs are there, Coursera courses are there, NCRT is coming up with a lot of online programs. Like for example, the opportunity for us to collaborate and learn right now. Like now I am connected with the, uh, the educators across six states, which would not have been possible otherwise, unless you have to travel all the way to a single place, which becomes very difficult. So there are a lot of opportunities to learn more and more. We can we can connect cross border. We can uh, download multitude of resources from uh, uh, from various uh, uh, websites, and there is flexibility in learning. Like uh, these online courses, uh, you don't have to kind of be, uh, uh, you know, attentive or be present when the course is going on. You can uh, take those course even at your own uh, spare time. Or if you have to read something, so you don't have to sit in the library and read that reference book and put it back. You can read at your leisure, evening, night, whenever you can. So internet does provide a lot of education in the, a lot of advantages in the education segment. Now, this is another self-reflection question, friends. How many times do you think that the young people check their phones in 24 hours? Out of 24 hours, I'm sure everybody sleeps for about, uh, depending on their schedule, for about eight hours. So minus eight minus 24, uh, 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 24. Uh, so uh, how many times do you think the young people check their phones? Do they check uh, uh, A if you agree with A, press A if you agree with B, press B if you agree with C, press C. Again, I'll give you 30 seconds to respond. Sometimes people check their phone when it rings, when there is a sound. Sometimes uh, you check your phone to when you want to send something. Or sometimes if the phone hasn't rung for a little while and we feel, oh, oh let me go and see if somebody sent me a message. But I didn't, my phone didn't make a sound. There was no message. I hope my phone is working. So that fear of missing out is there. Then at that time, also we, we check. So how are the responses coming in, Ms. Pinky?
हेलो मैम देयर आर मोर ऑफ ऑप्शन सी एंड देन ए एंड वेरी वेरी फ्यू हैव सेड बी सो वी हैव अ वेरी स्मार्ट एंड अवेयर ग्रुप ऑफ पीपल यस द कॉलेज स्टूडेंट्स इन इंडिया check their phone about 150 times daily and this is a, a, a research done about 8 months back uh, so phone over at, at least 150 times daily and they are actually online 6 to 7 hours a day and the adults check about 80 plus uh, times a day that is 4.5 hours in a day people like us are in our online we don't realize it while traveling to uh, college while going back home in between during spare time and even otherwise when we are not taking classes going home cooking shopping you know it's not that that means only when you sit down with a phone and it also means that you know like uh, even while walking on the road you know somebody calls you take the call so all that is included so uh, the college students 6 to 7 hours and we 4.5 hours so now considering this uh, you realize the importance of cyber safety and security because now there is a very thin dividing line between the real world and the virtual world we are spent just spending so many of our waking hours in the virtual world so the norms etc the safety norms the values everything that is in the real world that has to be uh, the safety procedures have to be applied in the online world also so uh, when when i talk of safety what are the words that come to your mind when we mention risks on the internet i'm sure you've attended sessions before where they have talked of uh, risks on the internet or you hear news or you listen to your friends some incidents online so just type in uh, you know one one word risks on the internet uh, for example uh, one risk on the internet is uh, cyber bullying for example so like this just write down in the chat box what do you think are the risks on the internet one one word shall i read ma'am please please abuse of personal information adult sites cyber crime spam scam bank hack hacking personal info data theft hacking misuse spam Perfect. data hacking spam privacy risk privacy risk yes ha yeah. hacking any information hmm 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 spam hack personal info office info financial insecure hacking okay so thank you friends for being so uh, participative i really uh, enjoy when the uh, participants are also involved engaged in the learning so now risks on the internet most of you have said all the risks so just i have put a few privacy stranger danger children meet strangers internet addiction online predators who are actually searching they are searching for prey they are like tigers and lions in the jungle who search for prey and these these predators are men and women like us who keep on searching for the prey so that they can take advantage of them they can blackmail them get money out of them and just get pleasure in emotionally uh, torturing them so there are plenty out there fake news fake news is, is another risk on the internet fake news we listen to the fake news during covid times there was fake news that uh, if you put something in your nose you will become okay and they uh, some people did and they suffered very bad consequences or there is fake news regarding some politics or some social issues so that is also a huge issue digital footprints is another huge issue because whatever whether we click online whether we type anything online whether we like online we are leaving these breadcrumbs behind we are leaving a trail of a foot, footprints behind so this is a big issue we don't realize it that if we have liked something which is controversial if we have liked something which is uh, uh, you know which should not be actually uh, uh, okay if if we, uh, if we have liked something which is controversial then we can be held responsible for this if somebody is post, uh, uh, posting something uh, about racism and we like it then we are a party to it so these are the issues gaming addiction for a young people this definitely an issue cyber bullying somebody already said 
sexting and grooming is when the predators the online predators they uh, uh, you know this is associated with stranger danger online predator and then sexting and grooming when they uh, talk in inappropriate language uh, uh, with the young children and then slowly win their trust and then uh, you know encourage them to share their personal details or pictures screen time is uh, again a risk on the internet because it affects the physical and mental health trolling is uh, uh, we know how bad the trolling can be like for example a cricket team has one laurels so everybody writes good about them one match they lose and then uh, those are favorite so called favorite cricketers are uh, trolled very badly politicians are trolled individuals are trolled actors are trolled if one uh, a movie goes a flop then in impersonation or identity theft we know that's a big issue somebody assumes somebody else's identity and sends messages on whatsapp that i am so i am your friend xyz i am stuck in some place and i need money or i need money for the uh, hospitalization of my father and they hack your whatsapp and they send these messages so they have assumed your identity they have impersonated you and then you think it's your so called friend and you pay the money so these are uh, uh, the major major issues cyber stalking is a major issue amongst the youth and uh, revenge pornography is when uh, somebody posts uh, pictures uh, uh, personal pictures of another person to seek revenge like two friends who have shared uh, intimate photos the boyfriend and the girlfriend and they fall out they are no longer friends and then one will post the uh, uh, photographs of the other so pornography that is the uh, pornography is uh, the uh, photos of the children especially the children in 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 appropriate uh, uh, clothes or positions whatever so these are some of the uh, issues which are there online i have just kept and then most of it hacking you had said yes hacking the data is also uh, a big big issue because the data gets hacked all the personal details uh, uh, get shared and then blackmailing happens or where people take uh, take out money and other uh, issues happen so uh, now i am elaborating on them a little more safety and health risks so first is privacy and uh, uh, personal safety now if in a real life we are very protective about our private data our private information our family details and our photos but in the online world it's just that people become very uh, um, you know unusually bold they have a false sense of reality and a false sense of bravado i'll give you an example uh, would we post our own pictures let's say i've taken a new haircut i've got a new bike i've got a new car so would we post this picture uh, uh, you know take a hard copy of the picture and ever think of posting this picture in the community center in my neighborhood anywhere never we, we would never do that earlier but now it is everybody wants to show off and you want to post a picture a picture with the latest car new car and then get as many likes so this is you know we are actually thriving on the endorsement of the people from outside which is not good and because of that we are putting ourselves in a compromising in compromising situations another thing is that uh, uh, personal safety uh, is that like let's say that we are going on a holiday so uh, somebody is going on a holiday Uh, with the family so what they do is they sit in the railway station or the airport and then they click picture and say they're going on a holiday to goa or wherever uh, for so many days and then they post on social media so what happens social media you have uh, not settled uh, the settings are there for everybody you have not put the settings for friends so anybody and everybody will in the world will see that you are going to goa and in the social on the social media you have also given your address and telephone number okay a lot of people do that now facebooks and instagram they don't need your addresses they ask for your addresses when you are setting up the app but it is a, it is not it is optional it is not desirable it doesn't have that uh, asterisk sign asterisk the in a in a form where, where there is asterisk sign you know that that is an essential information but there will be never any asterisk form uh, at asterisk sign uh, on your personal except for your name but people don't realize it they put in all their details so what have uh, these people done they they have posted to the whole world we are not home this is our address and this is our phone number and you can go and do whatever you want there was a case where a judge a, a, a senior judge 
uh, he uh, posted these details. This was, this was about three years back and uh, his house was robbed. So these are the things, uh, little things that we need to keep in mind. And why should we be sharing up personal and private data with everybody? The second is, as I said, data and identity theft. This is a huge, huge uh, issue again. And uh, identity theft people assume through when we have been careless. When we don't set strong passwords for our apps or any website that we go to, whether it may be financial website, whether it may be a, a social media platform, there are uh, passwords are what? One, two, three, A, B, C, D. Okay, then na name at a, a, B, C, D kind of, uh, 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 kind of uh, uh, passwords. There was a survey sometimes back on Vion TV. They had said that about 10 million people use the password as password or name and one, two, three, or the date of birth. Date of birth is already there on the social media site. So anybody can uh, hack that particular uh, social media site. So your passwords are the first doorway to your social media uh, uh, platforms. Okay. They are the first line of defense against all the hackers. So anybody who has uh, uh, set a very weak password, please go back and change the password and note it in a small diary somewhere and keep that diary in your drawer. Don't put it on your phone because what happens if you keep your phone lying somewhere or if you lose your phone, then even that, all the password information also goes to the uh, hackers. So, uh, so we have to be careful that people don't assume our identity. So our passwords have to be very strong. And then I talked about online predators, like these are like lions and tigers who are actually hunting for the prey. They hunt for the vulnerable people. And uh, uh, if, if somebody thinks that uh, I am uh, an adult and uh, nobody can hack my site, it can happen to anybody at any point of time with a small careless mistake. So when we are online, let's say uh, I'm doing uh, shopping online. So, or I'm uh, doing my, especially when I'm doing financial transactions. So what a lot of us do, uh, we are on that side and then we click the cross button on the top right hand side and we close the window. What does it mean? It means that the door of your house is still open when you are not there. What you have done is you have just drawn the curtain. If you draw a curtain and don't close the door before going out, will it keep uh, the thieves from going in? It will not keep away the thieves from going in, will it? So never, never think that clicking on cross on the top right uh, logs you out. What you have to do is you have to log out of that session, sign out, log out. Just like we lock the door of our homes, Similarly, we have to log out of any site, then nobody can get in. Otherwise, what happens? You have put the, you have clicked the cross up there. But that at the back on the server, your account is still open, whether it's a social media or whether it is your financial account or whatever it is. So if that is open, anybody can get in and then anybody can play mischief. Okay, so these are those little things that we have to be careful of. Other is cyber bullying and trolling. Cyber bullying and trolling, uh, bullying has been there in the colleges and schools ever since. But now bullying has taken very scary dimensions now. And it has ampli, social media has amplified bullying. So uh, uh, we find a lot of cases where the young children, the adults, the girls, the women are, are getting uh, bullied. So what we have to do is we have to choose our friends with uh, care. And if somebody is bullying, sometimes if it's, a, if it's a harmless bullying or something, we ignore. But if it comes to the point where, let's say, a student of your class is getting bullied, and then it is affecting the student a lot, the studies, the behavior, and uh, otherwise also, then action needs to be taken against it. And the child who's getting bullied, it's not his or her fault. We have to support that child in every way. Uh, inappropriate content is another issue uh, when uh, the uh, you know the, the, the young people go online and they find all sorts of uh, uh, videos and uh, uh, you know uh, <clears throat> write-ups and chats etc they go to inappropriate platforms so we has as adults have to control and how do we control if we have smaller children at home 
we have to set up parental controls. We have to set up, like uh, we can set up that all the, uh, uh, any document, video, uh, picture containing this, uh, some few words, inappropriate words, those should not get downloaded. So this is a system setting we have to do. So that the children are not ex uh, exposed to inappropriate content. And definitely social, emotional, and physical health concerns are there with extra uh, screen time. Uh, it affects social, it, it, it affects physically and uh, uh, mentally. And definitely emotional issues are there if uh, somebody is getting bullied and trolled. So these are some of the uh, issues and the health risk online. So what are the precautions? Like I have, I shared everything side by side. So sharing personal information, like I said, that our behavior online should be the same as a behavior in a real world. We should not become foolhardy sitting behind the screen of the laptop thinking we are secure in our homes and we can do whatever we want. We may be, while we are posting, we may be sitting in the uh, security of our homes, but what we are posting is a big bad world, a world which has no boundaries, a world which is dark and deep. A world where the whole population, whoever is on that platform, if you have not put the settings properly, can access your data. So what I would say that any precaution that you follow in your real life, please follow in the online world also. Now we come to privacy settings. Like I, um, I, I mentioned a couple of times that your privacy settings are not done. So uh, this is an assignment which each one of you must take back uh, on all your social media sites or whether it is your, or your email or Google, go to the settings and go to privacy. Most of, mostly it is on the right-hand side top. Um, so go to privacy and then you can, uh, you know, reset your settings. Because when we say log on to Facebook or Instagram, by default, everything is public. This means whatever I post on my social media, anybody from any part of the world can see it. Scary, isn't it? And why should I be sharing things with the entire world? If I want to share something, I can share with my friends. So you can put your settings, either it is public or it is friends of friends or it is friends. So I would suggest put all your settings as friends. Also set uh, your uh, inappropriate word uh, uh, issue also because uh, you are adults. But then what if your children or somebody younger in the house accesses your uh, uh, laptop or uh, your device or your phone, then they have access to all that. So set, do all those settings and uh, uh, then see, uh, you know, uh, how you want to go about. Like, for example, uh, privacy settings are important because uh, uh, let's say you've got a new uh, credit or debit card. Now, by default, the limit would be 5 lakhs, 3 lakhs, 10 lakhs. And then you start to do use that card in ATM or at uh, commercial places or online. The first thing you should do is you should set the card limit. If you do online banking, then uh, and for number one, for online banking, your password should be very, very, very strong. And you should have two-factor authentication. I'll talk about that. And when you log out, you should be, when you finish your work, you should log out or sign out. So if you do all these, net banking is not unsafe if you have taken these precautions. So coming to, uh, uh, to the uh, debit and the credit cards. So immediately, all those who do net banking should go online, click on the card section. And there is, you know, God forbid your card gets lost, somebody hacks into it, somebody takes down the card details when you're shopping and tries to use it. Uska limit set karo. Why should your card have 2 lakhs, 4 lakhs uh, limit? I'm sure none of us uh, need that kind of money from, uh, you know, we don't do that kind of shopping. And if you do, you can still go ahead and change it back to 2 lakhs or 6 lakhs. So give the limit of what you think, 25,000, 30,000, 50,000, whatever, uh, 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 what you think you Okay. Sometimes we do shopping with that. So you, you, you set your own limit. At least if, uh, uh, if by any chance the card gets hacked, so the, at one instance, the person can take out only limited amount of money and not the entire amount. 
So these are the privacy and the safety settings which you have to do. So you have to protect not only your own self, but your own money, your own data, and your everything about your family. Then we come to registering for apps. Now, uh, everybody wants you to download an app. You want to play a bill, they say download app. You want to do something, they, 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 for walking, people have an app. For drinking glasses of water, people are used to apps. Why do we need so many apps? You, know, you, you want to pay the bill, Vodafone will tell you, download my app, but why should you download all these apps? It's a little bit of effort to go on their site and pay. But when you download so many apps, or even let's say you're downloading, or let's say uh, an app for geography or an app for mathematics. Okay, so you have to see, you have to ask yourself a question that I want to download this uh, GeoGebra uh, app or whatever it is. Okay, so how important is this application for me? Okay, and then you feel, no, this application, will I'll add value to your teaching resources. Okay, then one step crossed, go ahead. Second would be, you go online. Has this app been recommended by somebody? Let's say during the five days you were recommended a few apps. Now those apps are pretty safe because those have been tried and tested and recommended to you. Okay. And uh, the second is if it's recommended by people, then I should go ahead. Okay, fine. The second tick done. The third tick, go on that app online while you're, you know, before downloading it, whether it is uh, go on that app store or play store, whatever it is, depending on the Android or uh, iPhone that you're using. On the top side, check, recheck 10 times the name of the app. Is it the same name? Because there are similar apps which can dupe you. Okay, after checking the name, go to the rating and review section. If the app has two stars, three stars, this means it's not liked by people so much. Then, you know, there is something wrong with it. And then go for the reviews. Uh, check out the review that uh, uh, what are the reviews of the people you will come to know. If you're happy with all the five steps about, download that app. And then when you download that app, uh, it'll ask you uh, that, should I have access to uh, the gallery? Should I have access to contact? Let's say I am teaching geography. Why, or I'm teaching math, I'm using that app to teach math, or I'm teaching, uh, I'm using that math to, uh, uh, app to pay my bill. If I'm doing all of that, then why do I need to, why does my app need my contacts or my gallery? It doesn't. They will ask you, like I said, there are a lot of optional and uh, uh, essential, essential ones have asterisk on them. Optionals don't have. So fill information where it is needed and not in a hurry. Tuck, 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 you know, you, you filled in the entire information. So be very smart while registering for apps. I'm not saying apps are bad. Apps are good. App Apps from reliable companies are good. They help us with our work, but we have to take care. We have to ask ourselves a lot of w, WH questions. What, where, how, when, okay, and why. So once we have asked ourselves these WH questions and we are satisfied, we go ahead with it. So like I come to passwords now. Like passwords, I said, is a first line of defense. Uh, it's, it's actually the uh, uh, key to your uh, uh, tijori. Okay, to your cupboard. Okay, and uh, to your locker. It is a key of your locker. Like, you know, uh, our, at home, we, um, you know, we don't give uh, the key of our uh, cupboard, which has uh, good, you know, which has, uh, uh, you know, our jewelry or our money or important documents to anybody. Similarly, we have to protect uh, our data online, ourselves uh, online. It is very, very important. And password should be a combination of numeric, alphanumeric, uh, capital and small letters. These days, a lot of organi a, a lot of these online uh, platforms I have become smart, and then they they give you weak password, medium password, strong password. I know it's very difficult to remember passwords. You should not have the same password for all the platform because if one gets hacked, all get hacked. But you should have different ones, and there is a way you can remember this password. Let's say you have five favorite songs. Okay, so the first letter of the song. Uh, the, the, the first letter of the first line of the song can be your password along with some uh, uh, date. So you can have password which you remember. And then, then we come to two-factor authentication. Some of you may have heard of it. Now, what is two-factor authentication? It's the double lock system, double security. Like uh, uh, when we leave our house, uh, we a lot of us have the 
wooden door we lock the wooden door but some of us have also put in uh, uh, steel doors outside the wooden door so we want to double lock and then we lock our gate also so this is called as two factor or multi factor authentication where we are not relying on only one system of uh, uh, safety so one system of safety is password let's say your password gets hacked for whatever reason and uh, uh, the second would be that you get your otp on them so that is two factor and then there is something called as multi factor authentication like for example people who are working in sensor uh, research centers science research centers and all that they also have their biometric reading or eye reading so that is multi factor authentication that is for the big organization so always set the two factor authentication so that in case your password gets a hack but nobody can actually uh, uh, you know go into your account or platform or whatever it is uh, unless they get an otp and the otp you get is on your phone and don't share your phone number with everybody so what is data and identity theft data and identity theft occurs when there is phishing smishing and veiling okay very interesting words and uh, uh, phishing comes from f i s h i n g what is phishing phishing is when we take the rod fishing rod we take the bait and we put it in the water and then we catch fish it is the same thing here the, uh, the there is a rod and there is a bait so what is a bait uh, uh, madam sir you you'll get a call madam sir this is a call you know you have won a lottery or you you can get uh, free holiday or if you click on the link uh, uh, we have provided uh, uh, you will get some gift okay now why should anybody be giving you gift all of uh, you know just like that so what they do is that they will ask you to click on the link you will click on the link and that link contains some malware what is malware malware is malicious software then the, the, and this is done by hackers the hackers actually send you these links to they ask you to click on links and then they put the malicious software on your device this software steals all the data and then uh, you know your entire personal details are with them or in some cases uh, this was a issue with the paytm many years back now it has been corrected uh, sometimes you get that you click on the link for kyc banks never send you these links to be clicked you know kyc they say come to the bank and then you feel ki oh i know this account is going to be closed and if you uh, it needs kyc and if you don't click on this link your account will be permanently closed but that link is not from the bank there is another uh, uh, new uh, issue uh, that you you know a lot of people are getting at least in north india a lot of people are getting this message that uh, your electricity uh, bill is due and if you do not pay by evening today or so and so date then your electricity will get uh, disconnected please click on this link to pay your bill or please click on this link to know the amount now this is not from the electricity bill department these hackers are sending obviously once we receive this kind of a message we feel oh my god my electricity is going to be uh, disconnected i must pay right now now even if i am in the college even if i am in the department i must pay because otherwise it will get by the time i reach home it will be 5 o'clock the office will be closed so <clears throat> so let me pay so this are the these are the phishing uh, uh, scams the smishing scam is uh, is similar to phishing only thing it is through sms phishing is through calls smishing is through sms like like i told you you get this message of electricity bill and what is veiling veiling is the difference between phish and the veil phish is small veil is big so veiling is when big organizations are targeted this malicious software is put into their system and all their data is locked taken and then they ask for huge ransom to actually release the data it has happened very recently just about a week back with continental tires in us so continental tires is a big big company okay and somehow the hackers uh, 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 you know got into the system and they asked for huge uh, ransom to uh, give the data uh, of it, it it was the maybe the customer data or it, it may be their own internal data so that is veiling now we come to blackmailing now these uh, people who fish who smish or do veiling so they ask for ransom way that is blackmailing 
in some cases, uh, if they get access to your gallery, then they will uh, uh, pick up, uh, they, they will steal the, uh, you know, uh, photos, the intimate photos. They can even steal a simple photo and morph it and then blackmail it. So these are the predators, hackers who are online. Ransomware, I have already discussed. So again, strategies protect personal details like we do in our real life. Blur names and faces. Now, this is a question which has been asked by a lot of uh, schools and colleges. That, Madam, why, how can we post the details of our school or college activity if we cannot show the pictures of the children? Because let's say you have put up an, uh, that, you know, uh, these three students have won the award. You have put up their name and you have put up their faces. Now, anybody can hack these uh, pictures and morph them and use them or maybe take down details and uh, misuse them. So what we suggest is, let's say you are in having an activity in your uh, some uh, carpentry or a drama club or whatever in the, or, or annual day. The picture should be taken from a distance, maybe not directly of the face profile, maybe the side one, maybe the back one, or if there are, then the faces can be blurred a little. I'm not saying totally white, blurred a little, so that nobody can actually, uh, you know, download those pictures and get access. The next strategy is third party app. So third party app is, you know, when you go to uh, Facebook, it tells you to download a particular app. So this is a third party app. Now, and they say that uh, you are visiting the site, which is, they give you a caution. You are visiting the, the site, which is uh, not very safe. Are you sure? Then you say yes, because you want to uh, go to that site for some pleasure or, or some work or whatever. So beware of third party apps. Avoid malicious links uh, 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 and then update your antivirus, which is very, very important. Uh, a lot of us, uh, it's like this, you know, we spend, uh, we will spend money going to uh, the hotel and having lunch and we will spend some two, three thousand, but we will not spend money on antivirus. We will, we will say that, no, no, I think let me take the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, Hello. Uh, th then we will say that, no, no, I don't want original one. And I don't want to pay 2,500. You, I mean, it is, it is actually pretty silly because people spend so much of money otherwise, but then they don't want to spend money on the original softwares. So use original softwares. Very important. Don't use pirated software, copied software, because original softwares continue to update their security. I, I'm, I'm sure each one of you must be getting that your operating system is getting updated or your uh, uh, office is getting updated. It is because you've got original software. So they keep on uploading the security patches based on the new virus that comes. Okay, so it's very, very important and avoid freewares. See friends, there is nothing free in the world. Every free thing comes with a cost. And we think that if we give a personal information and then I can get this free gift, so what? Uh, friends, our own information is worth more than any gold, silver, cash, or oil. Information is the new currency. Information is sold. People make money on that information. So don't give away your information freely. It is a most, most precious thing because our reputation, our happiness, it all depends upon that. So I have, uh, uh, this is, I've almost reached the uh, halfway of my presentation. So after this slide, I think I'll take the uh, questions. So stranger danger, I have talked that we always tell our children not to talk to strangers online, but when it is uh, not to talk to strangers in a real life, but when it comes to online, we are pretty okay with it. And we forget. And then in the real world, let's say a stranger approaches us or our children, at least we can see him or her. But in the online world, that stranger may be pretending to be a teenager, pretending to be a child, pretending to be uh, somebody, a smart person, but you know, putting up a fake photo, assuming a fake identity. But that person would probably be an online predator, pretending to be what he or she is not. So it's very important that we have to instill this concept in our children that never talk to strangers, especially online. We have to protect our children from inappropriate language and, con and content, influencing and grooming, I have told you, blackmailing also, I have told you. Like I said, we must ensure parental control. 
uh, we must limit access to the websites by uh, you know putting certain words and uh, uh, using content filters we must hide the faces and the names and we must follow digital hygienic digital habits and when we do it we are a role model for our children and they will also do it so uh, cyber bullying and trolling leads to a lot of emotional and social issues and also uh, too much of screen time leads to health issues addiction and uh, screen time so we must control all these so uh, friends i have reached uh, 50% of uh, halfway through my presentation uh, if you want for the safety and security part i can uh, uh, take the questions for 5 minutes we can do the questions uh, if anyone has any question they may ask hello madam yes sir uh, nowadays, I've noticed some of the new courses like ethical hacking. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Is that legal or uh, what is that exactly? Okay, so there are th three kinds of hackers. It's an interesting question. So there are three kinds of hackers, black hat hackers, gray hat hackers, and white hat hackers. Ethical hacking is done by the white hat hacking. Hacking per se is not a good thing. But these white hat hackers, they do hacking for good. Like uh, organizations like Microsoft, Google, or these organizations, or even our own government organizations, they have these hackers too, so that they can find the weaknesses in the system. So they are hacking uh, that particular site with the consent of the owners of that site, website or platform, so that they can find what are the weaknesses in, a, in uh, uh, the particular site. Like I am the author of a book, but then I give my book for review to somebody with the trust that you review the book and give me your feedback before I get it published. So the reviewer would be like your white hat hacker. So that is ethical hacking. Okay, then I'll proceed uh, if there are no more questions right now. Okay. Um, there is another question I was asking for explaining whaling. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there is another question asking to explain whaling. Whaling. See, ma'am, one was fishing and one was whale. Fish is what? Fish is small, whale is big. So if I'm uh, doing fishing, I'm looking for small fish. If I'm doing whaling, I'm looking for big fish. So people like us are small fish. Big organizations are like whales. Okay, so, uh, so this is like continental tire is a whale for the hackers. While if the hacker is trying to approach me, I'm a fish for the hackers. I hope it's clear. Matter missing means missing. Smishing. Sorry, smishing. Smishing. smishing smishing is like fishing fishing is through calling smishing is through sms's when you get the sms that you won lottery or uh, you get a free gift click on this uh, ma uh, blue uh, link you will uh, it will change your life you will get C cadbury's giving free chocolate so those links th those are smishing Smishing is also when you get message from, uh, let's say that uh, uh, your, your KY, you know, some your bank name. So let's say uh, you have an account in SBI. So that uh, uh, message may not be from SBI, maybe from SIB, for example, with slight name change. And then it will be you uh, please uh, uh, do your KYC, at, at, else your account will be closed. And then click on this link. So that is smishing. Okay, friends. So I'm moving to now education. So like I said, uh, uh, technology supports, uh, has a huge support in, uh, in our learning, especially the online learning. But what are the challenges we have to say? And what are our responsibilities as educators? So very important is the privacy and personal safety of our students. So student safety is paramount. When our students come to school, we have uh, boundary walls we do, and we have gate, which is locked where a guard sit. We don't allow anybody inside the premises of the, of, of the school. Even parents or visitors have to take the passes. Don't we follow all this? Because we don't want our student safety to be compromised. Now, what happens in the online domain, a student safety can get compromised if their photos get leaked, videos get leaked, personal data gets leaked, because student data is a massive wealth of sensitive information. So we are as responsible for the 
safety of the student and their data in the online world as we are in the real world. In the real world, we keep the personal data of students in cabinets, which is locked and only the office staff has access to it. But in the online world, when we are sharing details, then sometimes we become careless. So those are the challenges. So what is exactly student data? Personal identifiable information of student name, details, other demographic information of the student is very important because I said data is the new currency. Data is the new oil. Data is the new gold. There was a time when cash was important, gold was important, oil was important, but now data is the most important thing because people can mint money out of data. Then the student health data, we should not get out, uh, out because there are, you know, the, the student will start getting, you know, messages, the parents will start getting messages about if there is some physical, if there is some health issue. Demographic details of students should not go out. Academic information is very, very important. Uh, let's say somebody is not doing well, the data gets leaked uh, and uh, uh, it will be so embarrassing for that student uh, also. And then later it may impact him and her when they are applying for colleges. The testing performance data, very important. Behavioral details of students are very, very important. So let's say we have a student with a disruptive uh, uh, behavior, some issues with the behavior in uh, our school or college. Uh, but later what happens as the children grow up, they become mature, they grow out of it. So let's say these behavioral details, uh, uh, the school has marked somewhere that uh, this student has uh, issues with this behavior. So what happens is that uh, uh, this gets against his or her name. And please uh, switch off the, uh, please mute your mic, please. Somebody's mic is unmute. Sir, please mute your mic. Pinky ma'am, please ensure. Just see whose mic is not muted. <laughs> okay, so photographs definitely no. So this student data is a massive wealth of information. And a student's life can be destroyed if the data leaks out. Madam, can you uh, mute everybody and then unmute me? Okay, ma'am. Because there are a lot of people who are not. Sabko mute kar do, ma'am, ja ke participants wali usme. Yeah, ma'am. Because we are wasting time. Yeah, this is better. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, we must always ensure that uh, if we are taking student to a learning platform, it must be secure. Because from that learning platform, the data of the photographs and personal details can be leaked. Like Microsoft and Google are secured learning platforms. Zoom initially during COVID had issues, but it's also now pretty much uh, uh, safe. But sometimes, you know, you get those new free platforms for trial, and then they are probably there to hack the data. And uh, secure login credentials is password and username. Like I talked about password has to be very secure. You have to tell the students not to share the password with anybody. In early COVID times, the people didn't understand the uh, concept of safe, uh, of uh, a strong password or uh, uh, not sharing password. And there were many instances of uh, the strangers hacking into that learning platform and with inappropriate actions and inappropriate words. Uh, the other is secure cloud and data sharing platforms. Now, what happens is that in a school or a college, let's say we are sharing details about the student with the class teacher. So class teacher is preparing the result sheet and the subject teachers have to share the details uh, uh, with her. So subject teacher will not uh, just uh, uh, give it to a student or just anybody keep it on the class teacher's table and say that these are the maths, uh, uh, um, marks of the student. She will always give to that teacher in the hand and so that it's very safe and it doesn't get leaked. Similarly, uh, during online learning, we were sharing a lot of student personal data on the platforms. So uh, the cloud platform on which we are sharing, these data sharing platforms ensure that these are password protected and, the, and they are good uh, 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 platforms. Like I told you, uh, down, you know, downloading an app, similarly using a platform, you also have to use the same sense that it has to be very safe. The other is password protected files. Uh, 
we just don't hand over important data on a piece of paper. Every time we are sharing the details of the student, even if it's one-on-one, uh, uh, -on -one, we make sure nobody's seeing it and nobody has access to it. And then if we have the, let's say as a teacher, I'm preparing the result sheet, all the data of the student will be locked in a drawer. So similarly, when we are online sharing files with uh, the others, they can be password protected. Right click on the file, uh, uh, file and it will have a password protect. So you can give it a password and then you can share the password with the class teacher or anybody with the office with whosoever you are sharing the data. And they can use open it like your bank uh, uh, account details. So when you have to download your statement, does it not ask for password? I'm sure uh, each, one, each one of you has uh, uh, experienced it. So similarly, you should password protect the files. Two-factor authentication on any platform, whether it is a data sharing, cloud platform, social media platform, banking, any, that is very, very important. Now, the, another is limiting access and control manage of user privileges. Now, this basically in simple word means that giving right access to right people like a principal in the school or a college will have access to all the data of any child, whether it is academic, demographic, behavior, you know, she has a right to all. But going down uh, the line, the head of the department will have access of the data of her department. The uh, class teacher will have the data uh, offers access to the data of only her class and the subject teacher will have access to the data of only the subjects that she teaches he or she teaches across the classes. Similarly, you have to give the user management privileges very smartly in the online domain, uh, like and with strong passwords. Okay, then end-to-end -end encryption. What is end-to-end -end encryption? Like WhatsApp follows end-to-end -end encryption. Let's say if we are sharing details on any platform. And uh, uh, so uh, in end-to-end -end description, whatever you type on WhatsApp, whatever I type over text or whatever I type, whether I share the pictures, these get transferred to ones and zeros while they are getting transmitted to the receiver, to the other person. So even if some hacker intercepts it somewhere in the middle, he or she cannot make out anything of it and cannot, even if it ha gets hacked, it has no meaning because that code is only available to WhatsApp. So similarly, when we are using other sites, uh, social media sites for sharing student data, we should try our best. Um, it's not always very, um, uh, it's not very easy to find sites which are end-to-end -end en encrypted because these require a lot of backend work, but let's go to those sites and let's try to find them through a word of mouth also that which sites are safer. Okay, so this was the, these were some of the strategies. Uh, then it's very important to uh, teach about uh, digital citizenship and cyber safety, whether they are college students, whether they are pre-service students, diet students, or whether they are school students. We teach civics, we teach citizenship in our civics classes. Now we must ensure that we also have a chapter on digital citizenship. And this is especially for the diets where the future, the future teachers are getting trained. So in their curriculum also, uh, in the uh, digital citizenship concept should be there so that when they go as teachers, they are sharing the same messages with their students. So it has to be besides other your pedagogies and other information, the uh, chapter of digital citizenship is very important for the diets also and, and the, and the pre-service colleges. Then capacity building of students, teachers, and office staff is very important to sensitize them. And it is not that, okay, uh, three years back, four years back, we did a session for a teacher, so it's fine. No, the technology actually gets upgraded very fast. The issues every day, some new issue or the other coming. So at least once a year, <clears throat> you should ensure that you do you get the sensitization sessions done for students and teachers. And NCRT does these sessions. Every Friday, they have a cyber Jagrupta session. They are doing so many sessions. Encourage your uh, uh, students and your teachers to attend this on PME Vidya channel. NCRT has got huge resources on the website. Encourage uh, uh, your people to go and access those advisories, those uh, bullying documents and other things. So there is a huge lot in the world out there. We should be ready to accept the new learning. 
then computer teacher to run hygiene test on all machines very important because let's say that uh, it's, it's a school where uh, class 11 12s are also using the same uh, uh, lab as the fifth and sixth class so 11 12s they have access to internet we know they'll play mischief they might go on certain sites they might download something and if let's say a class 5 child comes after the 11th and 12th the class 5 child will have access to all that inappropriate things. So that hygiene test on the machine has to be done by the computer teacher. It is very, very important. Hygiene test also means running the antivirus, checking out the validity of uh, uh, the apps, checking out which are original, which are pirated apps, checking out which are the viruses. So basically like we do hygiene in a real life. So it's the duty of the computer teacher to clean the computer. It's not important to get the computer lab cleaned by uh, somebody, a, a cleaning person, uh, if the physical dust removed. We have to remove similar viruses and dust from inside our devices so that they work efficiently. Then school counselors to understand the reporting mechanisms and they should have the helpline numbers. So it's very, very important uh, because what happens, let's say somebody is undergoing bullying, trolling, or some is getting blackmailed the child would not know, even if it's a college student would not know where to go. So the counselors have to be there in the institutions. And these counselors have to be sent for regular trainings. So they can look at the issues on the ground, the reporting mechanisms, the helpline numbers. I'm from Cyber Peace Foundation. And then we, we have our helpline, 24 by seven helpline. And uh, we also provide uh, support to the people. So this I'll be sharing on the, in the last slide. Uh, involve parents. Very important is to involve the parents because uh, let's say the students uh, uh, are not allowed uh, <laughs> phones in the schools, but at home they do whatever they want and parents can't control them because they're not aware or educated. So you should involve them in the discussions so that because safety of the student is and safety and growth of the student is very important because uh, the parents as well as the teachers are equally responsible. We don't say that we cannot be responsible because the child is doing something, uh, this uh, online at home. But then I think uh, that will have repercussions in the school as well. And sometimes we have very smart parents who are very aware. So involve them in the discussion so they can be the resource people. And the last but very important is we have the drama club, the, car the carpentry club, the robotics club, the IT club. You could start a cyber safety club in the school or college. So it will have, uh, you know, uh, there will be three to four people, including a, definitely a teacher responsible for it. And that cyber safety club can conduct uh, uh, sessions and uh, can conduct awareness programs, can bring out advisories. Like in, in a drama club or in the publication club, the annual magazine is the responsibility of the publication editorial team. So similarly, you can have cyber safety clubs and this will and these people in this club, the students and the teachers, they can conduct sessions, they can organize competitions. At uh, Cyber Peace Foundation, uh, we, uh, we help the schools and colleges to set up the clubs at no cost. So if anybody wants to set up a club, uh, you can always connect with me later. Okay, now uh, I'm almost at the end of my session. So uh, friends, uh, 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 sorry. Uh, so friends, I'm giving you a couple of assignments. And uh, so you need to check and make changes, edit your privacy settings on your social media platforms and app, uh, Facebook, Google, Instagram, Snapchat, gaming sites, or any other learning apps that you may have downloaded. Just go to them and see the settings in case you have, uh, uh, you know, given, uh, given your personal details, which are not required, you can just go and delete them. Nothing will happen to that. Yes, the essential settings you can't, it will give you alert, give you alert or messages, but just go back and still it is never too late. So on Facebook, on the right hand side, on Instagram, on the right hand side, Twitter, anywhere, just check your settings and make your settings private. That is very, very important for yourself, uh, for your children, for other people in the household. 
Then uh, check and edit access to your personal data by the learning apps and platforms. I have already included that in my previous statement that whichever apps you are a part of, apps are not bad, you know, but you have to take care that those apps have, have to be trustworthy, they have to be re reliable, they have to be useful. So anything that you download, ask yourself WH questions. I really need it. What is it for? What will I do with it? Will it cause me any harm? So once you have asked yourself all these questions, then you're pretty safe, but there is no harm in going back and checking and, and, and editing also. Don't we do that in a real life with the other things? We go, we do that, no? If you're going on a long drive, don't we check our car or a scooter, whether it is roadworthy? So similarly, we have to take care in the online domain. When we go out and we want to buy something, even if we want to buy a dress or a sari, we go to three shops until such time we get a favorite sari, which is the type of fabric I want, which will look good on me, which is value for money. I don't buy the sari or a dress. Okay, I don't. But then we don't realize when you're going online and looking at things just because they are free, we keep on downloading them. So you have to apply the same critical thinking uh, concept in the uh, digital world. So friends, uh, we have talked a lot about cyber safety. So there are different ways of uh, uh, making your students and teachers aware. So I said awareness is very important. One awareness, one type of awareness is through these kind of programs where we are giving a lot of information and gyan. The other is when we are involving the students or the teachers themselves into the topic and they research, they create things, they come up with solutions themselves. Isn't that a better learning? As educator, you will say that combination of both works very well. So uh, Cyber Peace Foundation, with support from NCRT, we have been organizing the e-Raksha competition for schools and colleges. Now, what does this competition do? In this competition, the students from class three onwards till college level, they can participate. Uh, and the topic is uh, around the online safety. And then they can either create a poster or an essay or a blog or a research paper or just a poem or a video, but anything on cyber safety. So what happens if I ask a student that uh, create a video on, uh, let's say the student decides to create a video on bullying. So the student is going to do some kind of research and uh, or on uh, privacy, uh, you know, that, so that particular participant, student or teacher will do the research. And then while you're doing the research and you're creating your own, automatically you learn, imbibe and integrate that knowledge in your mind. And that's a better way of integrating the knowledge than somebody telling you. Learning by doing is always best. So this competition has been running since 2019. 2020, 2021, even through COVID we had. And 2022, we have launched last month. And uh, in 20, between 2019 to 20, 2021, we've got more than 1 lakh entries from schools and colleges. And every year we, uh, uh, we announce it, uh, the participants register, they upload their entries in digital format. These are evaluated uh, collaboratively by NCRT and CyberPeace. And uh, uh, these are collab uh, 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 evaluated by NCRT and CyberPeace. And uh, uh, then we, we have about 35 winners. Uh, just give me a minute, I have to plug my machine. Sorry, friends, it was running out of battery. Okay, so I'll, I'll share more details with you. And uh, so the topic for this uh, uh, 2022 is safer, responsible, and peaceful use of internet. So uh, I'll take you on the website as well and uh, no, note it down, www.eraksha.net. Uh, this is the website where you can register. It has all the information of last three years and also this year and uh, register for the e-Raksha competition 2022 or this QR code, uh, you can take snapshot of this uh, screenshot of this uh, particular uh, page if you can, if you know how to, and then you can also use the QR code or you can go to www.eraksha.net. I will share it later in the chat as well. And uh, let me take you through the uh, website. Give me a minute.
So friends, can you see my uh, screen, full screen? Okay, Binky ma'am, full screen is visible? Yes, ma'am, it is visible. So this is our site. And uh, if, you, if you go on the URL uh, on top, one minute. Uh, it is eraksha.net and the lock over here means that it is a secure site. Okay. So uh, I'll take you down. This is eraksha2022. Uh, you can click here to register. It will take you to the registration link and where you can fill your uh, details. Uh, you can actually, uh, if it's a student, if it's a teacher. So uh, we have various categories I'll be talking about. And the participation category comes in here, school students, college students, and all that. And uh, uh, coming back, coming, going back to the home, uh, <clears throat> uh, this is a little bit about our Iraksha uh, uh, competition that we are proud to present, NCRT and Cyber Peace Foundation are proud to present the fourth edition of Iraksha competition an annual event that brings together young talent to showcase their knowledge and creativity in the domain of uh, uh, cyber safety. Okay, so uh, the topic is safer, responsible and peaceful use of internet. And you can actually submit your entries on the topic through self-created posters, no copied, no ready posters. Self, everything has to be self-created. Self-created posters, painting, podcasts, videos, websites, websites can be created, blogs, essays, or even a software application. So this is, you can also go through 2019, 2020, 2021. So these are the videos of three years and who can participate? Category one is students. We have divided them into three categories, three to five, six to eight, and nine to 12. And obviously with the value, different evaluation rubrics and also the colleges. Category two is school teachers and faculty from colleges. Uh, category three is educational institutes, schools, and colleges. Category four is parents and guardians. Category five is some individuals on the ground who are doing remarkable work in the, in, the, in the space of cyber safety and security. So every entry has to be for cyber safety and security or even organizations. Let's say if uh, uh, your diet or your school is doing a lot of work, you've organized sessions and look at and then you've created some, uh, 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 you know, you've kind of been made your uh, students aware about cyber safety in a very proactive way, then even you can apply. Okay, the timelines are 28th October, it was launched and the registration started. The last date of registration is 31st January and the results will be announced on 30th March and April uh, 2023 will be the award ceremony. Okay, now these are our, we have our social media, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, we, are, we are there on social media platforms also. So this is the clip by uh, which Dr. Behra during the launch had talked about. Uh, he had talked about uh, uh, when he was launching uh, uh, Iraq. We know that cyber safety and security play a major role in our uh, life. We know that cyber safety and security play. Sorry, there is some issue with this. So uh, you can see it. Uh, it's not kind of taking because of the low, uh, the internet connectivity is taken up by Zoom. So both are not uh, uh, getting visible. Okay, so. Uh, uh, we come to about, uh, this is about Eraksha 2022. And uh, this is a little more about it, why we are launching it. And there is again the registration link, then various competitions. So what can you apply for? So topic is cyber safety. So you can create under the arcade, you can create drawing, painting, comics, memes, stories. Okay, anything like, th this is an example. You can, you know, th this is a winner of last year who's created- Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Uh this session timing is 3.30, ma'am. Yeah, so I'm ending this in two minutes. So okay. in, in Tech Avishkar, uh, the students can create some kind of a software or an app or even a, in the presentation, they can give the concept of an app will also do. In Word Hack, stories, essays, blogs, and the video and the videos also have to be self-created, interviews, documentaries, songs, drama, etc. So if you click on one, Okay, you, you go to the details of this. There are samples also given, and then you can uh, participate. Then there are resources, and uh, this Hall of, Play, uh, uh, Hall of Fame has uh, winners from last three years, their details. So this is all about uh, uh, Iraksha uh, competition. And uh, I will now uh, 
stop share and uh, go to my last slide. And then we'll start with the questions. Just give me a minute. Ma'am, there is a question in the chat box that, uh, that is there any course available uh, about cyber safety? Uh, there are a lot of courses about uh, uh, cyber safety, definitely. Uh, but if you are, uh, if you want to take it up as a profession, then take up a course. If you don't want to take it up as profession and just be aware, then keep on attending these sessions, keep on attending the Cyber Jagrupta sessions of NCRT. You will get good information because every week NCRT takes up a different topic. So that is very uh, informative. Like I was saying, Cyber Peace Foundation has a, a helpline. So this is our helpline number. You can take a screenshot of it and uh, you can take a screenshot or you can take a photograph whichever way and uh, you can contact us. Okay. And uh, another question is, are all the apps in the Google store are safe? No, definitely not. The uh, apps in the Google store are not safe unless you, you have to see the safety of it. They are not safe. Okay, like ma'am. So there are no other questions. about the safety part of it. Uh, apps are not safe. Those five parameters I gave you for the and the WH questions, if you apply those and then you download those apps after after applying those. Another question is, is iPhone safe? Every phone is safe. You have to use safely. iPhone, Android phone, any phone has all the safety features. So you should go to the settings of iPhone or Android phone and you should apply the safety features according to your need. So every phone has safety features. That is the mandatory thing. But what happens? We don't actually bother too much about it. Okay, ma'am. Another last question we will take is, is it possible for as uh, for us as parents to know what the kids are browsing? To know? Yes, of course. You can go to the history. Uh, uh, when they are, you, you can go to the internet history and you can come to know what they are browsing. And uh, uh, a lot of parents, uh, you know, the children are smarter than us. Uh, definitely, you know, children are uh, uh, very, very smart. So they will uh, delete the history. Okay. Uh, so what they will do, they will delete the history so that their parents cannot uh, see that history. So uh, uh, what you could do, you could set up the uh, parental controls for that. Okay, ma'am. So no more question. So uh, we'll... I have. We just we have two minutes more, and uh, if there is any question, I would like that question to be answered. Okay. What I'll do, I will put in my email ID uh, in the uh, chat box, and uh, uh, so, so that you know, if there is any issue, you can uh, contact me. Okay. Another question is how to set up parental control. Uh, you uh, you can go uh, uh, online, and there are those parental control apps, and uh, you should apply the five WH uh, concepts I told you. And if you are okay with it, then uh, you can uh, uh, download those, and the parental control will be uh, parental controls will be applied. Okay, I am putting my uh, ma'am has put her email ID. So any query you may email to her. Yeah, so two emails. Please note sorry, down. Sorry, sorry yeah. that uh, uh, the Duanisha Gmail ID, the spelling was incorrect. So we'll conclude this session here, ma'am. And I'm, I thank you from, uh, from all our SRG team for this informative and important session. Thank you so much. And uh, to all the participants, attendance link for evening session has already been shared in the chat box. Please mark your attendance for the last session of this phase training. 
and uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll take a tea break for 15 minutes okay uh, uh, i will uh, then go then uh, thank you very much uh, everybody for being a patient listener and uh, i hope uh, that the session was uh, useful for you and uh, your assignment you should not forget that uh, you have to uh, check your privacy settings and other things so uh, thank you very much and uh, uh, stay safe uh, especially on the internet thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you Uh, there is a one announcement like from Andaman, there is a one participant, A. Sub, A. Sarvanan. Please come up, please speak. Your name is not listed. The list we received from Andaman and Nicobar. Then in this case, we won't be able to provide you leaving letter, uh, relieving letter. A. Sarvanan from Andaman and Nicoba. Are you there, Mr. A. Sarvanan? <laughs> 